From strange propellers to cutting edge pod motors, we take a look at some of the strangest marine drives out there. We start off with a fun design which has been experimented both in the air and in the water. This particular invention combines variable pitch and counter rotation, thus balancing propeller torque effects. This in turn allows for soft thrust reversing, engine load control, and even overload protection. It is based on a set of bevel gears engaged with two coeccentric shafts. However, this design is arguably pretty complex and pricey for the average consumer. At number 6, the Shero Propeller. This particular company makes some of the most unique props out there. Its primary design reduces tip cavitation and vortices, thus providing some performance enhancements including more thrust, higher efficiency, and planing out at lower RPMs. This allows it to capture a larger volume of water, thus generating greater downstream mixing. Variants range from the $5,000 MX to the very high-end NX, which tops around $20,000. And this top model comes in bronze or stainless steel. With a size of up to 98 inches, it's more ideal for yachts, and their lower-end props are even pretty expensive for the average consumer. At number 5, the Max from PYI. This particular prop is made for catamarans. It has reduced drag under sail, and this allows the boat to tack quicker. Turbulence is also reduced, and the rudders provide improved boat handling. Users can select the diameter and number of blades for the right boat, but the pitch can also be manually adjusted for tweaking performance. This prop is pretty unique in the fact that it can switch from forward to reverse almost instantaneously. This particular company is also proven, and they have advanced the design all the way from a 1970s two-blade classic to the modern five-blade boomerang we see today. At number four, the RIM-6 from High Generation. This relatively new company has developed an electric thruster, which is easy to mount and set up on a smaller boat. Weighing around 14 kilos, it packs around 6 kilowatts or 8 horsepower. This motor is really neat in the fact that it features an autonomous self-adjusting blade, which reacts to hydrodynamic forces, thus providing an ideal angle between the updraft and blade mount. This means that the blades can adjust in real time for acceleration and top cruising speed. High Generation has already made mounting kits and battery packs for the motor, but this kind of setup tops at around 10 grand, so it's definitely not for everyone out there. At number three, the Harmo. One of the big players has finally come out with an all-electric outboard system. Yamaha has coupled a 48 volt supply with a 3.7 kilowatt motor, equating to a rim drive which can provide around 200 pounds of thrust, which clocks in at around 10 horsepower. The unit roughly weighs 120 pounds and can be used on boats up to 30 feet in length. The system includes digital electric steering, 140 degree steering angle, and a 74 degree tilt. As of right now, this motor will only be available to boat builders, so it's technically not on the open market. But we are still looking at first generation electric motors, which are still relatively expensive. And just like any other electric drive system, this is going to be heavy reliant on improvements in battery technology. At number 2, the C Drive. A flashy new pod drive can be used as both a puller and a pusher. Models range from 7 to 30 kilowatts, and the pod can be applied to a wide variety of crafts at sub 15 knots. The top and bottom interfaces allow the pod to be easily changed out and charged on the fly, but it's very similar to an electric car with a hefty battery system and a required 230 volt charging system. So once again, this could be a little preemptive for today's market, but it is a step in a good direction. One really exciting motor, which I have covered before, is the Deep Speed. With models ranging from 120 to 780 horsepower, or 500 kilowatts, it could be considered to be one of the higher performing all electric motors. It is very similar to a typical rim motor, and it has high efficiency at higher speeds. The motor is also located in the pod, so no extra cooling is needed. Once again, this is a relatively new company working on these motors. So we'll just have to wait and see if this really pans out and if they can make a splash in the market. We tied the beginning of the video with the end, and number one is the C Pod. One of the more efficient pod motors can provide over 67 horsepower or 50 kilowatts and provides speeds up to 30 knots or 34 miles per hour in absolute silence. This is more intended for hydrofoils and will last over 3000 hours without service. Two motors are tied with direct drives and this allows for two counter rotating props 
to achieve up to 80% efficiency. Once again, these motors are submerged in the water, so it doesn't need any extra cooling. Ultimately, it's going to be very interesting to see what will be the future of propulsion in watercraft. And a submerged water drive does seem to make sense for a lot of purposes. But as of right now, these types of units are still relatively expensive, and they fall a little bit short in terms of torque and horsepower when compared to a conventional engine. But with advancements in battery technology, I do think that eventually we'll see these kind of drives more common in watercraft. But I would like to know what you think. So please leave a comment, like the video if you enjoyed it, and also make sure to subscribe to my channel.